Nick Shaheen, <laughs> he's an options expert, joins the show every Tuesday to discuss this week's options outlook. He's also a Market 5 maven and author of Create Income with Options Spread. Nick, how are you doing this morning? Fantastic. How about you? Doing good. I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of kicking myself. Last week I thought I kind of had you on the ropes uh, with the apple, and I got greedy. I got greedy Uh-oh. about it. No, with you, not in my trading, but with you. You know, on the close because you were a little bullish, and I said I don't think it closes above forty. And really, what I was thinking was one thirty-five, and then that was trading. And then you know, once I tried to bargain down, Dennis helped in with you. But uh, let's just talk about Apple from last week, and you made a tremendous call with the you know the the. Um, the, the 125 yeah, magnet. Yeah, yeah, and you beat our head <laughs> against that when it came down. Could you talk about that? I mean, that strategy and indicator, how you use it, and what's looking good for this week? Well, what that, what I do with Apple is I like to set up my lottery tickets, so to speak, because I don't play earnings with a full position uh, because it, you know the reaction. You can't forecast it. Uh, so I like to set up a bullish into Apple's earnings like two, three weeks ahead of time. And almost every time I have the chance to get out before the earnings with a decent profit on my lottery ticket. So I, I don't even need to participate during the earnings. Um, so I did that going into the earnings and uh, then bought like an, you know, five cents or 10 cents ridiculous upside move in calls, which I really don't count. And um, so that was a loser, obviously. But the magnet was there, and it was a possibility. Uh, I didn't think they would go down there, really. I just couldn't see how people would want to puke it all the way down to 125 from those highs that it had. Uh, but long term, I would not short that company. And if I was worried about my money long term in Apple, I really should be worried about everything else in my portfolio if I have a big portfolio rather than Apple because it is set up with the best, rosiest uh, um, outlook possible. I mean, they have giant pockets, huge cash, um, a, a, a fan base that seems to be uh, obsessed with this um, ecosystem and they're kind of like stuck in it, into it, almost addicted to their ecosystem. So ideal situation, you overcharge, they overpay and they don't mind, they love it. So, I mean, how can you beat that? And I can't believe that Buffett, you know, with all due respect, missed it. It's like coffee company, you know, they're addicted to it. They can't kick it. <laughs> So uh, it's a rosy company, but the open interest kind of told us that it, it is a possibility, 125. And what are you looking for for this week here? Uh, for, for this week, I, I'm not shorting it. If I wanted to short anything, I would short the market itself. And this week, it's gone back to having a resistance line and some support. And the resistance starts at 129, very small, and builds up. So 130 to 135, it's going ha- to need a reason to move through it. Uh, on the way down, it doesn't have a lot of support. 125, it starts uh, the support. It's not formidable. However, what's formidable is how people step in and buy it once it gets down there. So uh, it is on paper shortable, but I'm not comfortable shorting it with credit call spreads, for example, or even puts. And if I wanted to do anything with Apple, I'd probably trade it long, long term and maybe sell some short term risk against that long term position. So if I buy the company itself or buy long-term calls, then I'll maybe some, some sell some short-dated uh, calls against those long calls maybe to put them to work. We got a couple interesting analyst moves here today, Nick. We had Netflix getting upgraded at Bank America with a 722 price target. We have Tesla getting initiated with coverage of Jefferies uh, with a buy and a 350 price target. But I want to go to Netflix here first because we saw the gap and go off the earnings report. We've kind of had two weeks of digesting this earnings report here now. I was arguing with Joel here this morning. I was getting a little bit more bullish. He's getting a little bit bearish. I think as long as it holds 550, the bulls are in command here. But I want to get your thoughts on Netflix. I, I agree with Netflix. I mean, everybody wants to short it. Uh, but if you remember, when it fell out of grace, it was kind of like about the same time maybe Amazon fell out of grace where they both have had a pass from the market. Amazon, a pass on profitability because of its growth, uh, how it's uh, continuing to, gr- to grow, even though they're spending every penny they make. Uh, with Netflix, it was the global growth idea. And suddenly this past uh, earnings report and the one before that, 
uh, they said, okay, we're going to give you that pass again because you're showing that you're, you're adding uh, global growth onto, into the picture, into the mix. So I, just yesterday, one of my members asked me if I would short it or not, and they gave me a level. And, uh, you know, the level on paper looked great. I told them, yeah, it looks good on paper. It fits my parameters of doing a credit call spread safely, relatively safely. Uh, but I'm not comfortable doing it for that reason. I think if it takes out 568, um, it has a chance to even get to higher highs uh, from from recent, so all-time highs. So I wouldn't show. I'm not comfortable shorting it. Uh, and, but on the flip side, it makes me so nervous to see all these open gaps below. So should anything in the general markets go wrong, and we have plenty of things that can go wrong. Um, I mean, this one would has the potential to wash down in a big way because of all these open gaps. Okay, and Tesla coming up, I think, a couple days from now. What's your take on Tesla? Tesla is an amazing uh, stock price the reaction the, these couple of weeks. Um, and um, I, I believe somebody moved them up before the earnings. That's pretty gutsy. Yeah, uh, Jeffries, we <laughs> were talking about. Yeah, and I want to ask you about that, Nick. I mean, I know you really like to stick with your own analysis. I mean, to me, it seems like you're the kind of guy that, you know, you'll take them with a grain of salt. But if, uh, you know, if you're long something and they come out with one of these ridiculous up upgrades or something and it hits your price target or a place you want to exit, boom, you're out. I think are you, I'm not necessarily a fader of the calls like me or, or, and or Dennis, but more of you're really not that influenced by it. If I'm lucky enough to be out of it and somebody upgrades something and the reaction is overrated uh, or overstated, I jump in. But I don't, uh, I'm not comfortable with these uh, very emotional stocks. And Tesla is one of them. Netflix is another. Amazon is another. Uh, so I, I, I tend to go with the flow of these mega movers. I'm not contrarian by nature. I do like to find places where people are wrong, but I don't want to hunt it down and just place myself in danger so if i was unlucky enough to have credit call spreads within tesla and then this moves uh, hits me um i may choose to close it at a loss or if i'm if i still am convinced in my trade uh i would try to save it somehow so um the the idea is to act ahead of time at rather what i do is sell spreads and if you sell a credit spread then you have a theoretical chance of success. So you set your line, say, okay, if this, if the delta hits this level, I have to do something. And if you make it a rule and act on the rule, then you're less likely to be caught unless a surprise and the stock moves like 5%, 10%, then it's hard to recover from something like that. But then you can help your case by leaving time on your side, right? And then if you, if you play everything for this week, yeah. a mess up, you're blown. There's no saving it. You know, fully prices immediately, then the chances of you getting out of trouble are slim. So, yes, they're exciting. Everybody asks me, do you do the weeklies? Do you play weeklies? Yes, but I don't play them the same week necessarily. You know, every once in a while, I, you know, I pick a few that I feel comfortable with. But why not play next week? Give yourself some time. Um, leave an escape hatch, whatever you want to call it, plan B. Uh, don't leave yourself with your back to the wall. One more company that I know you follow closely and is going to report earnings tomorrow night is Alibaba. And we were talking about this 80 level. And man, is that a huge level oh. or what? How are you playing this ahead of the report here, Nick? Um, my feelings are hurt with Alibaba. <laughs> I thought it would be a, uh, you know, uh, just a, a gimme you know, with, with the numbers they delivered. But then uh, I don't know what happened sentiment-wise or something. Level-wise in Alibaba... Um, you know, instinctively, I want to say play it on the long side for the long term, but uh, I'm not so comfortable saying that anymore, even though it may still be true. $80 is a big level this week from the open interest perspective and is more resistive than uh, supportive. And in fact, 81 is right behind it to back it up also with a lot of resistance um, and support. So it, it is an interesting point. 80, 81 is going to be a battle. And if the Bulls win, 85 is another wall in front of them. Um, there's a chance that 78 might pull it down a little bit, but not too fantastic as far as strength. So there's going to be this t tug of war, 80, 81. And then there's going to be a wall at 85 and maybe a small magnet at 78. Uh, so 
who knows how they're going to react to the earnings. Uh, who knows which Jack Ma is going to come out and speak in public because the first time he spoke, everybody absolutely loved him. The second time, not so much. And that was the start of the downfall. We also would be interested in hearing about all these, quote, fraud issues. And they need to put that thing. I think that was the sentiment breaker. You know, oh, fraud, <laughs> out, everybody. <laughs> even, though the, even though the fraud w may be, ju I don't know enough about it now b because the coverage has been spotty. But maybe it's the fact that the people that are using their platform that are doing the fraud, but nevertheless, they're the provider, a, 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 the facilitator, I guess, providing the platform on which fraud is occurring. So um, it, it's a coin flip, really. Like I say, earnings reactions are always a coin flip from the standpoint of open interest. 8081 is the battle, 85 is the wall, 78 is a chance of pull down. What about a, a heavily traded stock like Disney, uh, you know, big, uh, big interest in the stock, uh, moved up here off earnings. Is there, is there anything in the options uh, in the open interest here that any kind yeah. of stopping point? Go ahead, Nick. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, somebody asked me about Disney, so I pulled it up and uh, I saw that there's resistance uh, starting at 109. A 110 gets bigger. 110, 111 is a lot of resistance. 114, 115 is even bigger. 115 is the biggest resistance line. So today's pop, I think, almost touched 115. Um, but uh, there's going to need, there's going to be resistance there. So the interesting point is to look at the open interest tomorrow and see how they change their mind. Um, so then you see, okay, this is what happened. This is the price move. Then you'll see who's still bearish and who's still bullish and at one what line. So coming into today, the 114, 115 should stop the the bulls. But you never know until you really see what happens after the fact. Do you have the 113s, the weekly 113s up? Um, yeah, there's barely anything there that I saw. Is there, did they have a, what was the closing price in it? Um, I'm not sure. I know what you're talking about. The weekly, uh, the, the, Dennis, do you have it up? I don't have my other platform up. I don't have it up on me either. Oh, the but Disney I can go grab. What do you want? Are you one of the Disney what one thirteen calls? Puts, puts, not the calls. I missed the call. <laughs> I, I, missed, I missed the call trade on this one. For what period of time? What this are week? About? Okay, this hold. Week? They close at three bucks, three fifteen. And what, what are they going to be this morning? Like nothing. Oh, I there'll be a lot less. I mean, all the time premium just got, or all the event premium just got zapped out of it. No, I'm just thinking. Whoa. Nick, you're, I'm just going on your Apple theory here. You had all uh, that resistance. You said theoretically lower. You talked about it perhaps coming into 125. Now I know this is not nearly as active as the Apple, you know, Apple options. But I'm just thinking, you know, those things are just people are going to puke them out for whatever they can this morning. All the premiums taken out of them. You know, if I could pick this up, you think I could pick them up at like a, a quarter or something like that, Dennis? Thirty. I don't cents. know that low. The put, Fifty cents. Uh, yeah. Uh, later in the dip, right in the first 10, 15 minutes, probably not because there's still an event premium because they're still digesting the report with all the fundamental information there's, coming there's in there. Still, there's still going to be the madness, you know, the first few yeah. minutes. Uh, plus, yeah. it's pretty close to current price, isn't it? In the one thirteens right now. Yeah, yeah. one thirteen forty five. So it's forty five cents out of the money. You know I think what? it probably yeah. opened 50, 60 cents, and then it'll slowly come out if the stock stays high, obviously. I see I see what you're trying to say. You're trying to pick him up on the cheap for a lottery ticket for this week. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like, uh, yeah. like I'll put it like I'll put in 100 at a quarter or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or 50 or right. something like that. Then, I, you know, then I'm not shorting the stock outright. And he, you must be bored. <laughs> creating your own drama like that. <laughs> yeah, that's a great scenario, though, man. That's a great scenario. We'll see what happens. And it's because of you, Nick. It's because of the way you were talking about the Apple last week. Uh, Nick, yeah, we, but we, the Apple was a clear, clear line. This is not as nearly. Oh, that's why it's even better. I'm the only one that's doing it. But, <laughs> but you know what? It is. It's a trade there, Joel, then. It is, it is exactly right. I mean, it is playable, and based on the open interest, that that sounds like a, um, a, a worth a shot. Okay, it's, it's got about a quarter. It's, if the stock goes up to like one fourteen, one fourteen and a half, you probably could maybe get them at a quarter. I know you I, can do it. You can do it differently. Throw you it can, there, you know. I mean, somebody hits your bed, they hit your bed. Look, right? look at the S and P's just crumbling under twenty one hundred. Crumbling, too. Joel. They're crumbling. crumbling. <laughs> you know why? That's all seven, three and a half points. That's crumbling in our definition. Wait, wait, wait. Are they going to buy this correction? 
Wow. <laughs> this is a huge pullback here. They'll buy the difference of just licking their chops on this four point pullback in the S and P futures. Joke, joking aside, joking aside, market wide, uh, the only thing I'm watching, I'm interested in watching, is the IWM, the small caps. It's 123. Um, I've said for a while that we've been basing, playing around with this mega breakout level. So we're either going to bust out through it like we did around like the 1900s or we messed around with the 1900s uh, for a while and then boom, right out of there. It's same with the 2000 level. The 123 this week uh, shows some resistance. And if they can't break it, I don't think the markets can run. And we'll have another meander week uh, just like last week. Uh, so I would look at that. I would look at oil. Oil above 60 can get to 70 pretty quickly, in my opinion, as a long shot. And if that happens, it's going to freak a lot of people out because so many assumptions are based on low oil for a long time. And 70, even though it's still somewhat low compared to 100, it will start freak people out. Um, and so uh, these are important points. And rates, uh, 2140 on the TNX, I think, on the 10-year. Um, so whoosh down a little bit this morning to 2124, but that's still a lot higher. And most importantly... Just the last couple of days, I hear people saying, I'm bullish markets, but I'm expecting a burst in the bubble of the bond market. Like, I can't believe you can say those two sentences uh, in the same paragraph, because a, a burst in the bond bubble, that's some scary words right there, because they say, you know, the bond market is so huge. How can you expect a burst in a bond bubble, bubble without expecting repercussions market-wide globally? So I'm not sure that I'm comfortable saying these, and these are experts on, uh, you know, big media. But the TLT, that's an interesting level here. Just seems that we were talking about it when it was at 132 here. Really come off. Yeah, really come off there. Nick, you're always good on, like, the, jet, the overall broad market. So before we let you go, just uh, what you're looking at. I know you do SPY. I know you just talked about the IWM, S&Ps, stuff. What are your key levels here? Um, IWM and a TLT, if it loses 122, uh, that's be interesting. 122 has been a pretty good level for it, 121.75, something like that. So um, that's important, obviously, conversely, to TNX. But really, also China, we haven't talked about China, was a down 4% overnight, but they had been up in the stratosphere. So how much downside do they have potential? Uh, they talk about QE. So there's going to be a shoe to drop, whether it's going to be a bullish shoe or a bearish shoe. But this meander is lasting. But when, once it breaks, it usually breaks it fantastically one way or another. So just leave room for error, whatever you're trading. Okay, we've been on the line with Nick Shaheen. He's an options expert. He joins us every Tuesday to discuss this week's options outlook. He is also a Marketify maven, author of Creative Income with Options Spread, and he also comes in and puts me back in line with my options trading. <laughs> I, really, I really appreciate it, Nick. Have a great trading week. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. All right, see you later. Thanks, Nick.